Here is one of the hardest questions that I found on a practice SAT. In the quadratic equation above, P is a constant. What are the solutions for X? The choices here represent the solutions for X. So if you wanted to do this in the real mathematical way, the only way I can think of doing this is by using the quadratic formula. Here's the work for that. I mean, it is a lot of steps. There's a lot of room for error. If you really want me to explain it this way, let me know in the chat if 10 people at least request it, I will do it. But I found a way around this. Here it is. Since P is a constant, we can choose a number for P. The thing is, you cannot choose zero. And I did sit there and try to plug in zero. If you plug in zero, you're gonna get a bunch of answers that say a negative one and it's not gonna help us out. The next number that you cannot pick is one because if you plug in one in the answer choices, you're gonna get undefined values because you can't put a zero in the denominator. So one won't work. Last resort is to pick P equals two. So let's go ahead and plug that into the main quadratic equation. I'm just gonna write it above to save some time from rewriting. Two minus one is going to give me one. Two plus one will get me three. Let's go ahead and rewrite that. You end up getting 1x squared minus 2x minus 3 equals 0. From here, go ahead and factor this quadratic and you get x. You got to think of two numbers that multiply to negative 3 but add up to negative 2. That will make it 1 and negative 3. Last thing, find the roots by setting up an equation equal to 0 and solve those one-step equations and you get two answers. x equals negative 1 and x equals 3. So the good thing is that we already see one of the answers right here, x equals negative 1. That means means if you look back in your answer choices, it cannot be A or D. Only the ones that include negative one right here. And to see if this is your answer, we chose P as two. So we got to substitute P as two in one of the answer choices. And if it equals three, then that is the correct choice. Let's go ahead and plug that in for choice B. One plus two times the P value that I chose was two over two minus one. And I can already tell that's not gonna be it because one plus two times two is five over one. I'm trying to get three, this equals five. What does that mean? That means my answer's gotta be C. And if you don't trust me, you might as well do it. Two plus one over two minus one. It's gonna be three over one, which equals three. That is my value for X. So the answer to this is C. That's an evil question to put in there, but I like the math behind it. If this episode helped, throw a like and subscribe and I will see you on the next episode. Peace.